Why did Canaris want to continue to carry responsibility in this criminal war? He claimed he wanted to prevent things getting worse. Still worse? In the East too, Secret Service work was murder. Agents were recruited from the army of war prisoners. Many didn't even survive the training. Unfortunately, I saw agents we trained, even radio operators who were about to be used. They'd been equipped and given radio plans. They collapsed in fright. They had access to secret information. They didn't survive it. We didn't kill them ourselves. Our men from the Abwehr commands handed them over to the SD offices. But we watched as they dug their graves. Spies who were afraid were shot. The Brandenburg Division was also involved. This partisan war was brutal and murderous. A veteran justifies his actions even today. Behind the lines, we did what the partisans did to us. We realized it had to be done, because we saw. I once saw a German transport shot to pieces by partisans. It's not a pretty sight. We thought there were people who could fight that. We could. Others couldn't, such as the victims of the secret field police, which came under Canaris and was thus involved in the murders. The secret field police were a unit of the Wehrmacht. They had 6,000 men hand in glove with the SS. Canaris wasn't familiar with all their operations, but was jointly responsible for their actions. Heydrich wanted to integrate the secret field police into the SS. But Canaris didn't want to part with them. A paper war over a murder unit. Power triumphed over morals. Before the decision could be made, the riding partner died. I was going down the steps in that old building as he was coming up. He said, have you heard? Hydra has been murdered. Then I said casually, thank God the swine is dead. He adopted an official tone and said, come to see me at 10. I turned up at 10 and he said, first of all, Heidrich was a human being too. And, der mortuis nil nisi bene. Don't speak ill of the dead. Secondly, that's no way to speak to an admiral. Heidrich's state funeral was filmed for the weekly newsreel. Most Germans didn't know at that point it was the organizer of the mass murders who was being buried. Canaris shed tears for an intimate rival. The Zabwehr had problems. On the Atlantic, more and more submarines were being lost, and the Navy didn't know why. Canaris and his secret service never found out that the Allies had cracked the Enigma code. A major setback. Canaris's agents were sent on hopeless missions. They were all badly trained. They were all out of date in their information. And this particular man uh, arrived by submarine, I think, walked to the nearest railway station and sat there waiting for the train. I don't know whether he saw that the tracks were rusty, but he sat there for a couple of hours until two men came along and said, you know, there hasn't been a train here for 20 years. The Abwehr spread its operations further afield. Weapons and explosives for Palestinians in Jerusalem. Money for rebels in Iraq. To America by U-boat for the Pastorius operation. German saboteurs were set down in Florida and outside New York. Their mission, bomb attacks, spreading panic but the FBI arrested them almost at once. The 
submarine saboteurs were in jail two weeks after they landed. Six of the eight were executed after a military trial. Hitler was furious. The agents were party comrades who'd rendered outstanding service. He told Canaris, use Jews or criminals for that. He didn't have to be told twice. He discussed the details with Himmler and then sent German Jews appointed as agents to freedom. All we know is that Himmler gave his approval for us to be agents. But I'm not sure what that meant. We were to travel to Switzerland to spy on the English and Americans, I suppose. Not one of those saved did any spying for Hitler. Whilst thousands were sent to the extermination camps daily, Canaris could save only a few hundred. Most went to Spain and Switzerland. Those few are grateful to this day. I am absolutely sure that if we hadn't got out in 1942, we would no longer be alive. Saviour and assistant to a murderer. Two faces which didn't fit together. Canaris knew what was going on in the camps and that he himself was part of the system. He couldn't cope with the burden of this knowledge. I sometimes wondered if he would commit suicide. But his philosophy was, I can help to prevent some things. Not much, but some things. After Stalingrad, Canaris became a conspirator again. He contacted the Allies to investigate the possibilities for a political solution. Stuart Menzies, the head of the British Secret Service, seemed willing to listen. That basis was a separate piece in the West uh, uh, to enable uh, the German government to continue its war uh, against Russia. Uh, that, of course, had been German policy uh, at a much earlier date anyway. Uh, at, uh, 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 Hitler would have been very glad to have, uh, to have got England off his back. The Western statesmen broke off contact with Canaris. Until the German surrender, they needed their alliance with the Soviets. On all fronts and in the sky above Germany, the decision had been made long ago. On March the 13th, 1943, Hitler visited an airfield near Smolensk. The occasion was filmed by Hitler's pilot. Canaris was there too. In the luggage on the special plane was a bomb meant for Hitler. Behind the plot were Oster and Danani. How much Canaris knew about the plan isn't clear. He may not have known the details, but he supported the conspiracy. In fact, the bomb in Hitler's plane didn't go off because it was too cold for the detonator. <laughs> 